<ride> cioè, cioè, signori miei, loro sono uomini di mondo e sanno benissimo come vanno queste faccende. Il povero curato non c'entra. Ok, hello everybody. Uh, this is Tom in Los Angeles and I have two guests today who kindly accepted to be part of this uh, conversation. Uh, today we've, uh, in fact, the funny, the funny part of this meeting actually is that we're going to talk about a body read that we did in May for the maybe Midrash and we are basically almost in September. <laughs> so we are sl slightly late to the booktube schedule, but hey, you know, hopefully people will forgive us for this. Uh, we, we all read The Betrothed, the famous Italian uh, historic novel by Alessandro Manzoni. And so today we're going to talk about this. Um, why don't we start with a quick introduction of the both of you for, you know, any of, of the people watching the video who might not uh, know you. And uh, if that's the case, they're missing out on, on your channels, especially, you know, if I am not, if I'm somebody who is not following your channel, what can I find? On your channel what kind of books are you talking about on, on your channel and what, what is your background and we can start with ursula okay i review a lot of classic world literature and historical fiction and this month of august i'm doing a lot of um posts on my main blog and on my channel about Hermann hesse who is my second favorite writer because this is his um 60th death anniversary this month and also sometimes do other things like for example related to history and music but mostly about books and writing and I'm an indie author myself. And you're also an author, right? You, you, you've published uh, a few books and you're also uh, working on a, a, a historic novel as we speak, right? Right, several of them. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, uh, Ursula. And what about you, Christina? So my, I have a channel called Knitting Book, etc. Because I like knitting and I like books. They are the two things I like the most. And my, my channel, uh, well, for now I'm, I've been away from because at the end of the year, at the end of the school year, I had lots and lots of work and I didn't have much time to record. I hope to get back in September and my channel is a regular channel where I, I talk about mainly what I read. I read almost everything except for literary fiction, contemporary literary fiction, which I don't have much patience to, but I read uh, classics, then historical fiction, fantasy, sci-fi, uh, mystery books, everything, every type of genre I read, even non-fiction as well, uh, especially I, I enjoy biographies and autobiographies, and that's it. So I hope to be back when the new school year starts, so in September, when my routines are back to normal, and that's it. So, thank you, Christina. Here I am. Is it uh, is it literature that you teach? Uh, English and uh, language, and and what I studied was Portuguese and English language and literature. So that's th those are my studies, and I. I teach language, so I, my, my credentials, if you want, are to teach either uh, Portuguese language or English language. The, uh, that's what I do. Although in schools we do lots of, lots of everything, actually, but that's my, my mainly um, thing. Yeah, uh, so I, I guess um, Alessandro Manzoni is not really part of your curriculum that, that you teach to no. your students, right? No, but I, I knew of, of, about him because uh, I remember when I was a kid, I, I loved literature. I, all, I always had. So, and I remember that I had some kind of reference book, I don't know, about uh, the great works of uh, more or less Western canon, but not only uh, English. So all about uh, literature of Europe and Alessandro Manzoni was one of the names referred there with the Ipromesis Posi. So I, my mother had the book in Portuguese. It's called, well, Os Noivos, which is the betrothed. So that's how it's the, the Portuguese uh, title. And I had tried to read it. At the time, I remember that I read 
the first chapter and that I was very young and I think that I I wasn't quite into the book yeah but this time it was very easy actually so it was very yeah I liked it a lot I think yeah. uh, can I can I ask you Ursula what's your history with the, the betrothed had you read it before or did you know about it before I don't think I had ever heard of it until you mentioned it on your channel, though maybe I did like hear about it years ago and didn't just remember it. But I okay. do enjoy like classic Italian literature when I can find it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, maybe I can share um, my history with the, the betrothed as an Italian kid, because it's going to be the same history that every Italian citizen basically has with this book, which is uh, not very nice because <laughs> you, you are uh, growing up in school and uh, you are really young maybe 13 14 and they force you to read and, and uh, study yeah. this book and so if you don't if you haven't read it before this is your school duty you know it becomes your school duty mm -hmm. and as such unless you have a really really good teacher it's difficult to like it in the first uh, instance um, but then obviously you saw those seeds and then from those seeds, you know, later on in my life, I, I reread it, I picked it up and I had that aha moment years later when I read it properly by myself for the first time and I realized mm -hmm. what an incredible masterwork it is, um, not only in terms of a historic novel, but, but also from the language point of view, because the Italian that Alessandro Manzoni used is mm -hmm. so polished and perfect and many people in Italy say that the language of the Promises Posi or the betrothed uh, really is the base for modern Italian because Manzoni oh. took the the Italian that was already that had already been created by Dante by Boccaccio mm -hmm. and Petrarca and uh, in the 19th century he modernized it uh, in fact it was all part, there was a very scientific process to this. He was um, from Milan in Lombardia, mm. and he decided to move to Tuscany, to Florence, for a period of time. He said to rinse my clothes in the Arno River <laughs> so that his, he would learn the customs and the language even better because he decided, he had decided that uh, the final version of the betrothed would need to be written in the Florentine language spoken by the educated class of, of the Florentine mm. people. So mm. Italian, modern Italian was born with the Promessi Sposi and it's an, you can say that it's almost an artificial language because only a few people actually spoke the language. All the rest of Italians were speaking something a little bit different, different dialects and different fragmented uh, type, of, type of languages. Uh, but, you know, that's the interesting note about, about the language. Um, and also the reason why they teach it at school, right? Because it's so important for, for our history. But, you know, let's, let's talk about... Uh, I was trying to... Oh, it's okay. We, we can see you well, Christina. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, because yeah. It's, it's, the sun is... I was looking at the sea. I, I, I can see the sea here from my window and I and the sun has set so um <laughs> what's the name of the Portuguese uh, location where you are on holiday it's a it's a Ericeira. it's not far from Lisbon it's half an hour by car but and, uh, but it's it's Ericeira. it's a fishing port so um it's a very famous uh actually summer place I was now I was coming back home and I can hardly listen to anyone speaking in Portuguese because it's full of foreigners because everyone comes here, especially those from, um, the, from Scandinavia because this is always um, mild temperature here. Actually, mild to cold for some people, okay? The, uh, since I'm, I'm, I, I arrived here last week and it, it has been... 20, 21 cent, uh, Celsius. So Lovely. that's the average temperature here. Where in Lisbon, we, we've had 
35 or more. So more. sometimes the difference is like that. Okay, so Very but it's quite nice, but it's 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 turning it's dark now. <laughs> so of course because it's almost um, nine o'clock. <laughs> so oh yeah, no, <laughs> thank you for, for being available for this chat. So let's uh, get into it. You know, my main question to both of you is did you like this novel and and why what you know what what particularly hit you about it? maybe we can start with you ursula and, okay. and then we move to christina well should I, should i hold the book up no it's okay i'm gonna i'm gonna put the image okay. of the book in in the video okay sure i really really enjoyed it i love historical fiction particularly door stoppers and a book you can climb into and live in for a few weeks with a <laughs> large ensemble cast and many different storylines besides the major storyline I loved, I haven't read much on um, 17th book set in the 17th century prior. I think Forever Amber is the only major book I can remember reading in this century. And also learning about Italian history. Yeah, because it's uh, based in the 17th century for anybody who's watching and who doesn't know the plot. The plot is based in the Lombardy region in the 17th century, while Manzoni was writing in around the beginning of the 19th century or the first 20 years of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. So he based it 200 years before in a moment when uh, the historic novel was not really a very, it was becoming maybe a popular type of um, writing of work, but uh, uh, Sir, um, the- Walter author, Scott. That's what <laughs> I'm thinking. Walter Scott was the perfect- yes archetype for yeah. uh, for the type of novel and so Ivano influenced Manzoni back then and uh, and he wanted to write something like that uh -huh. you know that Walter Scott when I was a uh, young I loved his writing so first I think Ivano and uh, other other books um, so I, I really enjoyed it and I did enjoy uh, the betrothed I like as I said I like um historical novels too and that because I've always liked to learn about uh, the way people lived in the past so uh, the problem was that um, when I read something like this and it happened this time too I am always looking for <laughs> uh, parallel reading and trying to find for example in the beginning the first scene we we find those two men they are called Bravo and I was going to let me check and <laughs> Now it's easy because I googled, <laughs> but I googled those. So I, I love, I love this type of book. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we try to give uh, at a very, very high level uh, an idea of, of the plot? You know how how it moves. Let's say because um, mm -hmm. the first edition of this book was called Fermo and Lucia, and this was about uh, 1820, 1821. Mm -hmm. um, then Manzoni worked for 19 years on revision after revision after revision. And, uh, mm -hmm. and in 1840, he published the very final um, revision called I Promessi Sposi or The Betrothed. And, but it was completely different in, uh, in terms of language and maybe also in, in part of the content. So who are the main uh, characters of, of this uh, great historic novel? Uh, like uh, Christina, like, like Christina said, they are this. There is this two. There's this couple. They are um, the betrothed. Mm -hmm. Their name is Renzo and Lucia. And uh, the very first scene of the book is this uh, pivotal, pivotal scene, where we have <laughs> uh, a local priest, a local priest uh, in near Como, the Como Lake, who is uh, walking around by himself, minding his own business. And uh, two bravi, bravi means uh, the mm -hmm. two folks, two, uh, they were enforcers of a, a local lord of the land, mm -hmm. um, uh, are waiting for him. They're, they are waiting for him and uh, they address mm -hmm. him. And immediately we can see that he's not happy to, to meet them, right? Uh, uh, do you, does anyone of you want to describe this scene? Because I think it's quite central. First of all, uh, what was his name? Father Abbo, uh, what Don was Ab his name? Don I Abondio. don't remember and I don't have the book here with me. 
a bond you, a bond you, yeah. Yeah. So he, because uh, as I understood this bravi, they were actually illegal, illegal, as you said, enforcers, but they were not, uh, or at least several uh, people tried to to expel them, and because they were not nice people, they were kind of bandits. Exactly. And uh, so, uh, as soon as uh, uh, Don Abondio saw them, he he understood that he was going to have problems. And and we see that yes, um, he's uh, he feels threatened. Well, he doesn't feel he is he is actually it's a threat. <laughs> threat. It's a very it's a very <laughs> explicit threat. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. They so, say, uh, yeah. Please go ahead. And so, no, they they threaten. That, so what what is that? Their master or whatever he is doesn't want him to marry a couple that is going to get married. So and we understand that he doesn't want them to get married, and so he makes a threat. And so Don Abondio doesn't know. He's a very funny character, actually, very fearful. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say that he's a little bit of a comedic point of the book because whenever he appears, it has um, kind of a funny moment, isn't it? That we we in the middle of everything serious and sometimes even very sad that we see. Um, he is a comedic reference, if you want. So absolutely, he's he's a he's an, an incredible character, Donabondio, because he has the comedy and tragedy in himself. Mm -hmm. The comedy mm -hmm. of the fact that he is uh, ex in a he's a coward in an ex mm -hmm. exaggerated way. Ma signori miei, se la cosa dipendesse da me, ah, queste sono Charles. Il matrimonio non si farà. O chi lo farà, non se ne pentirà perché non ne avrà il tempo. Ma, ma, uomo avvertito, eh? Perché dobbiamo it, dire? But then, the, tra the tragedy of the character is the fact that he is uh, a priest, he's supposed to be very altruistic, but mm -hmm. he's probably the most selfish character of the entire, mm -hmm. of the entire novel, mm -hmm. no? Well, and Ursula, what did you make of Don Abondi? Did you like that character? He was like fun comic relief sometimes. And he was like kind of cowardly. Like, why did he accept the priesthood if he wasn't going to, you know, live up to the highest standards of his calling? Mm -hmm. that, that's that's really one of the but points. He, he mentions that uh, an easier type of life. So it, was, it wasn't a vocation if we want. So Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Christina, your uh, uh, connection is a little bit uh, uh, about yeah. that. I, I think we I, we understood that uh, the background of Don Abondio's choice for his life was mm -hmm. not something that he felt deeply, but something that he just yeah. happened to fall into because he, he, was, he didn't know what to do with his life. And so he ended up being a priest, yeah. but he never, That's right. he, he was never a, a a very, you know, it was never an intense calling or a real, real calling. Yeah. No, that's right. That's right. That, that's what I was saying. I remember that he said that. Well, he didn't know what to do, so that looked uh, something easy <laughs> to do, yeah. <laughs> to follow. Um, and so we have this uh, kind of cast of characters, but this is the crucial scene from what everything springs. You know, uh, the initial. The Bravi are working for a local lord, kind of powerful and rich. His name is Don Rodrigo. And Don Rodrigo, he wants to stop this marriage, this wedding, because he has set his eyes on Lucia. He is interested mm -hmm. himself in Lucia. In fact, we have the, the novel overall uh, also has an aspect where it describes uh, um, in many different instances the harassment against women don't you think because yeah. uh, yes. lucia is a victim of many different things but you know even just walking around the, the road she gets mm -hmm. uh, kind of heavily uh, cut cold by ron rodrigo and a couple of mm -hmm. instances and uh, and that's very distressing for her so it's clear yeah. to the reader how don rodrigo you know what don rodrigo wants to do what his goals are 
yeah. and uh, and why he doesn't want this uh, wedding to happen. Mm. Uh, so from, from I, I, yes. I was going to say that I also learned because I didn't know that uh, there were Spanish people in Italy. So they were under uh, Spanish domain or something like that, isn't it? I didn't know that. So it was that, something so this I learned. Is a, very, a very fundamental uh, aspect because of the history, mm -hmm. because uh, Manzoni chose to set the, the novel in the 1600s when mm -hmm. uh, Italy uh, uh, historically and culturally as well, had started to decline. Oh, after mm -hmm. the Renaissance, Italy kind of started to this kind of cultural decline because of the different wars and fragmentation. And uh, obviously, you know, it was the still the century of Spain with the discovery of America and Spain was so powerful. Mm -hmm. They had conquered a big, big chunks of Italy in, in that moment. Mm -hmm. But Manzoni, uses this type of uh, method to convey the uh, atmosphere of uh, a co a colonized Italy of his own times. Because in his own times, 200 years later, mm -hmm. Italy was under mm -hmm. the, Austro the Austrians, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and at least the north part and a big chunk of even Tuscany, even if he was the Grand uh, Ducato of Tuscany, he was still controlled mm -hmm. by the Austrians. And because of relatives in the in, in, in the royal families, so he is he is talking about the Spanish conquerors uh, externally, but mm. behind the lines, um, between the lines, he's referring to the Austrians. There is this okay. uh, this reference that that he's making. What what else did you like about about the book from uh, you know different character? Maybe is there a particular scene that maybe you you think you will remember more than others um, as you you know think back about this novel? Uh, for me, uh, the scenes uh, there were the scenes of the, the what was it uh, the plague that uh, we see in the cities at uh, almost at the end of the book. And uh, there's a description of a woman with the dead daughter, I think, uh, or son, I don't remember. And that scene was, was very strong for me, you know. Uh, when Renzo sees her and she's carrying the, her son or daughter, I don't remember quite well. And the fact that she knows that she still has another child and that they are go they are both going to die of uh, the plague as well and all that scene it was uh, incredible no non me la toccate per ora devo metterla io su quel carro prendete Frederico or something like that, Borromeo, which Borromeo? Is, I also yes. checked on him. He's Cardinal, a true, Cardinal Borromeo. Yeah, he's a true, yeah, Cardinal Borromeo, yes, he's a true, um, so a, a real life person. So I also checked on him and that he's the cousin of Carlos Borromeo, which is a Catholic saint. And um, I also liked, uh, so he's a very uh, likable character, of course. But the plague scenes were the, perhaps one of the strongest scenes and then the i think that it's one of the things that i think it's also very very important is the the scene where renzo has to forgive uh, don rodrigo and that was very very also a very yeah. important scene for me yeah. so yeah. which is it's something that it's not easy at all even uh, and so it was perhaps they were the two strongest scenes for me yeah. What about you, Ursula? Well, I like um, dark and macabre periods of history and themes <laughs> in literature, so I was very interested by the plague. I have read about like the bubonic plague in the Middle Ages, and I just um, recently um, read and reviewed a book on um, Nagasaki on the bombing of it. So, you know, right. obviously those images really stay with you, and they're like very powerful and horrific. Exactly. This is the historic event of the 1630 plague in, uh, mm -hmm. in Northern Italy and mm -hmm. also broader in, uh, in Europe. So Manzoni mm -hmm. researched a lot because for him it was 
200 years old uh, history, any research that the period of time. It kind of reminds me, uh, it's interesting how in the novel, Manzoni describes how irrational the society becomes when there is a pandemic, which uh, does it mm -hmm. remind you of something <laughs> that happened in the last, uh, <laughs> in the last uh, couple of years? Some, uh -huh. not, you know, not necessarily everyone, but uh, many people under that type of societal stress act in a very irrational way. In, yeah. the, in the book, they, they describe the untori. They were, they were these people who were believed to go around and, uh, uh, you know, and enforce the, the virus, the plague on other people in the houses. Mm -hmm. It was all a psychological, more psychological than real, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but, but they were very strong. That scene of the cart with the dead bodies and that was... Well, you must have loved it, <laughs> Ursula, if you like those scenes, because <laughs> that was incredible. The that scene where he's in that cart and they they are I think they collect the bodies, isn't it? But and the way he describes the city and the dead bodies uh, that are thrown, the thrown out of the window. Uh, yes. Isn't it? Oh my god, amazing. So yeah, that was it's interesting because uh, it's interesting because the, it, it gets really really dark in this type of mm -hmm. in the third part of the novel, and uh, from what I know about Manzoni, of course he was Christian, but he also had mm -hmm. a little bit of a pessimistic worldview, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can feel it, I think, from uh, how he resolves the novel, and even from the conclusion itself of the novel. Mm -hmm. We're not really spoiling anything, but he makes. Mm -hmm. He makes a little bit of Christian reflections at the very end of the novel. And he says, the human being mm -hmm. is like a sick man on the, on the hospital bed. And, uh, and he needs a little bit of, of mm -hmm. help in one way or the other. It, it's not really a joyful view of life, is it? No, not totally, no. And even some... Uh, I found that a little bit pessimistic in the sense that, for example, Donna Bondu, we hope, at least I did, that he had learned his lesson after he was, um, uh, well, of his interview with the, with the Cardinal. But in the end, we see that he remains the same <laughs> because <laughs> he only changes when he knows that Don Rodrigo is... <laughs> Gone forever. Okay. Don Abondio is the worst. Don Abondio is the worst. Yeah, yeah. He never changes, so he <laughs> continues the same. So, yeah. Uh, especially, especially because of what his uh, title and and his his uh, clothes are supposed mm -hmm. to be to to mean for his <laughs> life. Yeah. Um, because, uh, in fact. To me personally, one of my favorite scenes is exactly the one that you quoted, Christina, with uh, Cardinal Borromeo, between mm -hmm. Cardinal Borromeo and the unnamed character. Uh, yeah. There is a conversion. There is a conversion mm -hmm. that starts happening in mysterious ways in the heart of the unnamed character. And then, thanks to Cardinal Borromeo, it blooms and, and it, mm -hmm. it, it flowers. Uh, I love I love that part very much, and I love that it started, or at least what we see, it starts with one of his uh, men that he also didn't have the courage to uh, be, be. I don't know. He's with Lucia, isn't it? He 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 doesn't have the courage to um, treat uh, Lucia badly. And he felt something there too, one of his henchmen or, or something like that, isn't it? And yes. so he's, the unnamed uh, was, uh, in a way, he was um, moved by the, his men as well, isn't it? Yes. And then we see that conversation. It's very, very, very interesting because it was not something that it was sudden. No, we see that he starts getting also uncomfortable with himself and who he is. Because exactly, of that. exactly. Okay. And these are, these are men who are not used to feeling compassion at all, because in their life, 
they had done a lot of violence, mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, uh, st stealing, etc., and killing. But oh. uh, yeah, I was going to say the the story of the uh, the brother. I don't remember his name. I'm sorry. The the man. Um... Fra Cristoforo. Yeah, that's right, Fra Cristoforo. Mm -hmm. His his story is also very very interesting. The oh, way yes. he uh, at the beginning and. He's uh, the way he behaved towards the family of the man he killed, and then uh, their response to his attitude as well was quite uh, good as well. Uh, Frank Cristoforo is, uh, like you say, Christina, is a very, very crucial character. He is also somebody who converted to uh, Christianity. In fact, he decided to become a priest. Uh, uh, out of his own strong decision because of some facts that happened in his in his life and uh, i personally love those type of characters because especially when they come from a, a sketchy past and background mm -hmm. and then something changes and, and they because their sanctity in a certain sense is even edgier even stronger so fra cristoforo becomes uh, the crucial character who helps Lucia with uh, a problem that he has, which is a Christian problem, with the mm -hmm. vow that he makes to God uh, towards the, the end of, uh, of the book. The, the, do you, Christina, or do you, Ursula, want to comment on, on that particular scene or that particular part? I mean, like, I, uh, it's similar in Judaism also to Christianity. Like, if you make a vow under duress or just, like, you make a vow in, like, the heat of believing you'll do it, it's, like, okay it can be you know canceled later if you really meant it at the time but you know circumstances meant you couldn't do it or you just you know realize this isn't the vow for me and like you know all will be forgiven as long as you say like absolve me god of this vow which i undertook absolutely yes it, it, i i i would believe this is something that is common in all major religions mm -hmm. the fact that historically you have the mm -hmm. ability to make vows but there has to be some kind of uh, um, exceptions, no, from from the um, religious rules point of view, and and that what and that's what Fra Cristoforo helps Lucia understand. Mm -hmm. But so, I was going to say that Lucia is that character that is always very uh, pure and very uh, her, her ideas are very correct. Even there's a scene where they want more or less to uh, play a trick on Donna Bondio, and she's yes. not. Uh, she's not. Uh, even her mother, isn't it, <laughs> says that she should do it, and she's not quite happy with that idea. She wants to do everything correct. So yes, um, yes. In, you know, Christina, in Italy, uh, Lucia, uh, by many commentators, has been uh, sometimes criticized as. Uh, the weakest character in the novel, not because she's unlikable, but because she is not, she's a little bi-dimensional, you know, she's okay. a little, you know, yeah. too pure, too straight, and she doesn't have kind of a third dimension or more realism like the other characters. It's mm -hmm. completely, it's arguable, it's completely arguable. Yeah, I think that she's actually, she's a very, she has a strong character in the sense that she knows what she wants and uh, she tries to act accordingly. So I actually uh, think that, and it's a little bit also, of course, that's, that aspect of her, it's also a little bit funny. It, it's serious, but it's also funny. Uh, for example, at the end when she's uh, <laughs> saying, no, no, go away, go away, Lorenzo, where, where we know that she likes him, but she says, oh my God, I cannot. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's, it's um, I liked her. I actually liked her too. So yeah. What Ursula? What did you think of Lucia? Well, she it was kind of you know passive. Well, sometimes that's the deliberate intent of a character. They're supposed to be acted upon instead of like deliberately acting until like that final moment at the end where they finally you know become a much stronger character. Hmm. Exactly. So like Christina says, uh, she is uh, um, a real heroine from the point of view that her spiritual strength is very, very strong and yeah. probably stronger than anyone else 
in the yeah. among the main uh, characters but uh, but she is pushed around by the, the, the events because there are events mm -hmm. that are bigger than her and she cannot control them. Um, again, uh, something that filters clearly from the novel is the condition of the woman, not only in the 17th century, but also in the 19th uh, century, mm -hmm. because that's what Manzoni is thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, so do we have any type of uh, conclusive reflections or maybe if somebody hasn't read the novel, is there something that uh, you would suggest to people who haven't read The Betrothed? I really liked it, although it was a bit of an old fashioned writing style, but that didn't really bother me at all. Like a lot of these things would seem like, you know, gimmicks or weak writing if a modern writer did it, but they just felt like a natural part of the overall story. Like for example, sometimes the forward momentum would stop for a few chapters of backstory about a character like the <laughs> Two-Faced Nun or Father Cristoforo. Mm -hmm. And just like the story within a story set up at the beginning, it just felt so like wonderful and natural in this book. Yes, it's great. true. Yeah, I was going to say that we also have the story of that woman, which was also a woman that really existed because I was <laughs> researching about her. Correct, too. correct. Uh, that woman that uh, befriended Dulcia and then in a way betrayed her a bit. Uh, or uh, she was also a, a, a known character, well, a known person with a slightly different story, but uh, the she nun, really existed. The nun from Monza, the Monica Yes, Monza. yes, 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 that's right. She was a nun. I, I, I couldn't remember what was. And um, so, but as Ursula said, we, we sometimes stop in the action and a uh, character almost disappears, isn't it? Like, for example, Renzo for some time he isn't there but um but i really i do like it as a, again it's we learn a lot also about the situation of the times the, the lives how things were and i love that type of thing so but i yeah. i have a predilection for classics so um and for historical novels so if you like that i think that you'd really like it. Yeah. And we could say that uh, The Betrothed is the number one Italian literature classic because of many the reasons of history and the reason of the language that I mentioned uh, briefly at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that uh, us Italian students all have the signs of the, the scars. We have the scars on our back <laughs> of the, <laughs> of the promises posy of, of The Betrothed. <laughs> um, I think that every, I don't know how it is in the United States, Ursula, but almost in every place there is a, some books that mark us as things that we had to read when we were in school. And so uh, almost every young youngster hates them, <laughs> hates the book until they are grown ups and then they reread it. Or again, uh, we also have that in Portugal with Portuguese literature. I don't know if with American literature you also have that. I know a lot of my peers bash The Catcher in the Rye. I personally liked it when we read that, but I don't know if I revisited it as a grown up if I would feel differently. Okay. Yeah. I remember reading it and like it, but I have to reread it to remember why, <laughs> because I, I really hardly remember, but I do, I had to read it as well because I studied American literature too. So there were lots of uh, pieces of literature that I had to read. And I know it's always like, a, it's work, isn't it? And when it's work and compulsory, we don't like it. That's yeah. how it is. Yeah. Well, um, so, I mean, The Betrothed is a, a, a novel that uh, we absolutely love. I think uh, anybody can can love and enjoy. Uh, you shouldn't, you know, look at, for example, if I see the covers that have been used in the modern publications, they are a little bit off putting because they make it look like something that is airy fairy or classy, you know, mm -hmm. something distant, but mm -hmm. it feels very close. It feels very familiar. It feels like universal. It feels really universal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's a very, very strong, strong novel, right? So that's what I can say. Yeah. And uh, uh, well. And I think it's, it stays with you, doesn't it? It remains. It stays with you, yeah. The characters mm -hmm. remain with you. They've made something mm -hmm. like uh, 
more than 20 TV adaptations in Italy. <laughs> it's incredible. Okay. You, can see, you can go on YouTube and, and probably find them all. Some are better mm -hmm. than others, but it's, it's funny to see Don Abondio, especially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And so, and so, with my thanks for, uh, for joining from Portugal, Cristina, very, very, very okay. grateful for this chat. A little bit of a, a belated, maybe midrash uh, conversation. And, <laughs> uh, and Ursula, thank you so much to, to you as well. Yes, so thank you. We're, we, we are going to continue our chats. Uh, and uh, I encourage anybody to connect with you as well and your channels because you. Uh, you always bring up titles that are you have eclectic taste and uh, I, I really loved your your reflections on them so thank you again and bye have a good night bye. Ursula I have to ask what's your favorite author because Herman Hesse is the second favorite so what's your favorite I was dying to ask you no. this <laughs> Alexander Isayevich Solzhenitsyn Okay. Ah, I discovered well, I mean, um, right after I turned 16. Archipelago Gulag. Okay. Yes. It's the Gulag. Yes, that's what I was going to ask. It's that one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to. One of my greatest regrets in life, I never wrote him a letter and all the years or lifetimes overlap to tell him, you know, how much I loved and admired him. I thought he would live to at least 100. I still have lots of time. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. so he made it to 89. It's a, it's a big uh -huh. gap that I have because I haven't had a chance to... To read it yet i know a lot about it but i never actually read it and i absolutely absolutely want to read it so uh, i will do so yeah uh, is he the author of the cancer award or something like that yes. the title yeah because we, right we, we've the first circle okay which we, takes we it talk... as inspiration from dante mm -hmm. the title okay okay because no um there's a group of people that read uh we read the magic mountain this uh oh. summer this uh i don't know june or something like that and uh they were referring that book the cancer ward and that perhaps there's going to be a read-along of that book as well so uh, that's why i asked that okay as a not only a genius but uh sounds like he was uh, such a, a profound thinker right ursula mm -hmm yeah so mm -hmm. i look forward to reading some some of his yeah. work yeah um mm -hmm. okay well thank you again and uh, thank you for the read along grazie molte <laughs> <laughs> bye ciao you speak soon okay bye 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 bye, bye.